Hey, Stephen, can you uh, show the slides on the screen? I can. Please? I can. I can put them back up. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Good evening and welcome to this community meeting to discuss the Coffee Park and Fountain Grove Neighborhood Roads Disaster Recovery Project. My name is Greg Mariscal, Supervising Engineer with the City of Santa Rosa's Capital Projects Engineering, and I'd like to thank you for joining us this evening. Live interpretation of this meeting can be heard on the Spanish channel. You can join the Spanish channel by clicking on the interpretation icon that resembles a globe in the Zoom toolbar on your screen. Before we begin the presentation, our translator, Pablo, will translate what I've just said. The rest of the meeting's translation will be only on the Spanish channel. And then our host, Stephen Brown, Administrative Secretary for Communications and Intergovernment uh, Intergovernmental Relations with the, with the City of Santa Rosa, will explain how the meeting will work. Bienvenidos a la reunión. Eh, comunitaria acerca del proyecto de recuperación de desastres en las carreteras en los vecindarios de Fountain Grove y Coffee Park. Eh, mi nombre es Greg Mariscal y soy ingeniero supervisante con la ciudad de Santa Rosa, eh, ingeniero de proyectos capitales. Eh, interpretación en vivo estará disponible para esta reunión eh, sobre el canal de español. Si usted quisiera unirse al canal de español, puede hacerlo haciendo clic en el icono de interpretaciones que ahora resembla como un globo terraqueo en su barra de herramientas de Zoom. Eh, antes de comenzar esta presentación, nuestro intérprete, Pablo, va a traducir todo lo que se ha dicho y luego le van a pasar el micrófono, ya que se ha dicho todo esto, al, eh, a nuestro anfitrión, Stephen Brown, eh, con la ciudad de Santa Rosa, que también va a explicar cómo va a trabajar y funcionar esta reunión. All right, thank, thank you, Pablo. Uh, I'm going to have to stop sharing the screen just for one moment while I move Pablo into the Spanish room. So give me just one second. <clears throat> okay, again, thank you, Pablo. As members of the public join the meeting, you will be participating as an attendee. Your microphone and camera will be muted. Only today's presenters will be view viewed during the meeting. The City of Santa Rosa is committed to creating a safe and inclusive environment free from disruption. We will not tolerate any hateful speech or actions and will monitor that everyone is participating respectfully or they will be removed. If necessary, we will also immediately end the meeting. This meeting is being recorded and will be placed on the project website neighborhoodroadrecovery.com a few days after this meeting. <clears throat> At the end of the presentation, Greg will open up the meeting for public questions and comments. All right, next slide, please. Thank you, Steve. Tonight, after introducing our presenters, we will briefly review the purpose and scope of this project the proposed timeline and phasing of work, what residents can expect during construction, including how we'll handle emergency access and evacuation routes. We will conclude with your questions and comments. Next slide, please. At this time, I would like to introduce tonight's presenters and panelists. Again, I'm Greg Mariscal, and you have already met Stephen Brown, who is hosting tonight's meeting. From the City of Santa Rosa, Transportation and Public Works Capital Projects Engineering, we have the City's Project Manager, Felicia Ong, to provide an overview of the project. Construction Manager, Matt Vale, with Coastland Engineers, will then provide details on the construction flow and address potential impacts this project may have on residents. Subject matter experts with us tonight serving as panelists for the Q&A portion of tonight's meeting include Mike Van Mitty, Associate Traffic Engineer in Transportation and Public Works, Neil Bregman, Santa Rosa Fire Department, Emergency Preparedness Manager, and Dan Giordani, Vice President of Operations with Argonaut Constructors. I'd like to remind you that, as the mailed invitation postcard pointed out, the focus of this meeting is on the work getting underway in the next few weeks in the Coffee Park neighborhood. 
While tonight's focus is on Coffee Park, we will provide some general information on the scope of work for Fountain Grove and when we anticipate work to commence. There will be another community meeting prior to the start of Fountain Grove work to provide details about that phase of the project. This second community meeting is expected to occur in late 2024. And now I'll turn the meeting over to Felicia. Thank you, Greg. Good evening, everyone. The Coffee Park and Fountain Grove Neighborhood Road Disaster Recovery Project will rehabilitate approximately 33 miles of roadway damage during debris removal following the 2017 Tubbs fire. In addition, the project will remove and repair sections of damaged curb and gutter and upgrade about 300 per pedestrian curb ramps to meet ADA compliance requirements. Funding for this $21.8 million project comes from multiple sources, including the Community Development Block Grant Disaster Recovery from the California Department of Housing and Urban Development, PG&E Settlement Funds, Measure M Traffic Relief Funds, utility impact fees and capital improvement funds. Next slide, please. Construction of the initial phase, pedestrian curb ramp replacement and some curb and gutter replacement commenced in Coffee Park in January, 2024. Roadway work in Coffee Park is going to start later this month and is expected to be completed by this fall, depending on weather or other factors. The decision to start in Coffee Park was based on an effort to minimize disruption while maximizing efficiency in coordination with the projects currently underway in Fountain Grove. Fountain Grove will undergo rehabilitation efforts similar to those in Coffee Park, curb and gutter replacement, curb ramp upgrades, and roadway treatment. The initial concrete work in Fountain Grove is anticipated to start this summer with roadway work expected to follow in late 2024 or early 2025, again, depending on weather or other circumstances. Certain phases of this project will occur concurrently in the Coffee Park and Fountain Grove neighborhoods during this summer and fall, with the entire project scheduled to be completed in the summer of 2025. To ensure transparency and keep the community engaged and informed about this process, we will host a second community meeting focused on the Fountain Grove neighborhood as we get closer to the start of paving operations in that area. At that meeting, we will be able to provide more details about the work schedule and anticipated impacts to residents. Now I'll turn it over to our construction manager, Matt Vale with Coastland Engineering to talk about what to expect regarding the day-to-day -day construction activities. Well, thank you, Felicia. And, and uh, next slide, please. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Vale. I'm with Coastland DCM Engineering, and I am the construction manager on the project. And I'd like to just go through kind of the typical construction activities uh, in a little more detail. And I've got some slides later in the slideshow here to kind of... Um, make some illustrations of the typical activities. As uh, Felicia said, Coffee Park, uh, the work has started in February with some curb ramp replacements. Uh, we have been hindered by the weather over the last few months, but we're back on track. And we anticipate being out of the Coffee Park area by the October or November of this year. Uh, the scope of work will include curb, curb ramp, curb and gutter replacement, uh, a grind and overlay of the paving surface. There are some uh, dig outs and slurry seal on Waltzer and Holly Park. Um, there will be our crew, our crews are now out in the field um, removing or resetting the access covers for manholes and valve boxes. After the resurfacing, they'll reset those to the finish elevation and then crews will come through with striping. Next slide, please. Um, the work in Coffee Park will be sequenced. Um, we will be working generally in one or two areas at, at a time only. Um, we'll be working, we're currently working in phase one area, which is the northeast corner of the par Coffee Park. Our crews are also working in phase two area, which is the northwest corner. We will then be rotating down into the phase three area um, with that work and subsequently to phase four and phase five. Next slide, please. 
Uh, for Fountain Grove, uh, as Felicia said, we're going to try to get up there in the summer, in June, and start working on curb, gutter, and sidewalk. Uh, and we should be um, finished with that work by the end of the calendar year. But because of weather conditions, um, the paving operations and the rest paving restoration operations will probably take a pause during the wet months of um, you know this winter and early part of 2025, but we'll be finished up in June or the summer of uh, 2025. Uh, the work up in Coffee Park, I'm sorry, in Fountain Grove will also include curb ramp and gutter replacement, um, dig out repairs, and I'll talk a little bit about that in a in the demonstration slides. Um, we'll be applying a slurry seal, which is a, a, a pavement restoration process that does not involve grinding. And then obviously when we're done resetting the surfaces, we'll come through and stripe. Next slide, please. Um, as with Coffee Park, we've got a sequence of operations. Again, we'll be trying to maintain activities in no more than two phase areas at a time. Uh, first, we'll be working in uh, the phase six area uh, down by Round Barn, moving over to phase seven, eight, nine, and then finishing up in phase 10. Next slide, please. So this is a little bit redundant, but um, the curb and gutter replacement, grind and overlay, um, resetting the uh, manhole covers and valve boxes, dig out repairs, surge seal, and striping are all the, the various construction activities. And I've got some slides, so if we go to the next slide. So the first construction activity, and I think many of you in Coffee Park have probably seen this work underway. Currently, this is the replacement of the curb ramps and gutter pans uh, throughout the Coffee Park area. We'll be, as I said, moving up to Fountain Grove, um, continuing on with these same activities. The The intent of this work, obviously, is to bring all of these ramps into compliance with the, the ADA um, requirements for it. And the, the biggest feature that you'll notice now is the ramps all have truncated dome sections, uh, which many of the ramps in Coffee Park do not currently have. Next slide. Uh, the next item is, here is what's called the grind and overlay. Um, the slide here on the right, and I hope everybody can see fairly well what's going I'm sorry, the left, um, is the grinding operation. And basically, there's a pulverizing uh, piece of equipment here that follows and, and rolls down the street. It's basically got a set of um, teeth underneath it that, that pulverize the asphalt. And the intent is to remove about two to three inches of the asphalt. The um, spent or ground asphalt is um, conveyed up into a truck and then it's hauled out of the area. Um, the this, this surface is rather rough. Um, so there may be some times when we've we've done some grinding operations and we've had to open the street back up. You will note, notice that the surface of the pavement is going to be a little rough, but it's only until the, the asphalt uh, is placed on top. The other operation here is obviously the paving operation. It's a fairly complex um, orchestration of vehicles, um, and it will take up a considerable amount of space on your street. Uh, we've got asphalt trucks coming in and out to, to unload into a conveyor, which then loads up the um, paving machine, which follows on behind this train. Um, the asphalt will go down relatively quickly, and um, we should be able to get you back in on your street as soon as the asphalt is cooled, which usually takes about an hour to two hours after it's been placed. Next slide, please. Uh, the other surface treatment is slurry seal. Slurry seal is a water asphalt emulsion and um, fine particle, emul basically it's an emulsion. It's uh, placed with a with a hopper truck here and is spread out. And it when it comes down out of the hopper, it is um, a liquid material. And the 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 advantage of this is it makes a really smooth new surface without having to tear up the streets. It usually takes about two to three hours to dry, and then you can drive on it. Um, the other operation and I don't have. A photograph of it is um, what's called a dig out, and basically, if there are segments of the pa of the pavement 
that are very out, that are very cracked or deteriorated will basically excavate out that section of asphalt, place a new asphalt uh, plug in there, and then we slurry seal over that uh, that area, and you've got one smooth uh, finished surface. And then the other operation, obviously, is the traffic striping. Um, this is a crosswalk being put in place. We're going to be doing crosswalks, uh, stop bars, stop uh, graphics, speed bumps, um, and, and basically restoring all of the surface uh, markings that you have, including blue dots at fire hydrants, et cetera. Next slide. Uh, for the general hours of work, the, the things you can expect, the project is going to take 371 working days, which is about 18 months. Uh, the hours of work are, are going to be Monday through Friday. Holidays are going to be observed. The working hours are 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. But the more important issue is the lane closures. Lane closures um, will begin at 8.30 and will have picked up by 4.30 p.m. The, the lag time between there, between 8 and 8.30 is generally time spent for the crews setting up, implementing the traffic controls, and then at 8.30, they'll implement the street closures. And again, those street closures will be pulled up, and you'll have access back into your homes um, no later than 4 o'clock. Uh, weekend and night work is not currently anticipated, but it may be possible. Um, night work is very unlikely since... The majority of this work is in residential areas, um, and so that will not probably be an option for anybody to work at night. Next slide, please. Um, some of the impacts that you can anticipate, and I wanted to say first and foremost is emergency access and egress will not be impacted. Um, we will be coordinating on a daily basis with emergency services and the uh, police department and other services. If there is an emergency, um, uh, you know, an ambulance is called or a fire truck has to get in, work will stop immediately. We will not hold up any emergency vehicle at any time. And the crews know if they hear a siren, they get, they stop work, they move their equipment out of the way and they provide emergency access at all times. Um, there will be street closures. Um, and our best way to mitigate that for you is to let you know when it's going to happen, how long it's going to happen, and when it'll be complete. There are a number of ways that you can get that information. We've got a weekly newsletter. We've got the website that's on the bottom of each of the slides. The website address is there. Many of you will probably have received a door hanger or a handout already for the work we're doing in Coffee Park. And then we've got these meetings that we will uh, conduct on a regular basis, basis, but the idea is to keep you informed as to what we're doing and when we're going to be done. Street parking, and I think probably experienced some of this already with the curb ramp replacements. Um, we will be posting no parking signs 72 hours in advance. Um, those, those no parking signs will be up on the streets we're going to pave now because we can't um, we can't do the paving if cars are parked along the curb line. So basically, when we post the no parking this next week and, and going forward, parking on the streets going to be prohibited because we can't we can't resurface the streets if we've got vehicles parked. So if you have a, a vessel, a motorboat, a fishing boat, or some other a trailer, something that you park in the street on a regular basis, we will ask that you relocate that just for the the time when your street is going to be paved um but when the parking is restored it'll be back and and you should be able to get in the day of the paving operation next slide please access to your home um there as i noted there are going to be street closures and traffic will not flow as usual we will have traffic controls we will have detours and most importantly, we're going to have flagging. And so if in the event that you need to get home, you forgot something or you need to get out or you need to get it back in in the middle of the day while the paving is going on, we will have flaggers posted at the beginning of the road closures. If you communicate with the, the flaggers, they can 
um, get get the crews to stop. It may it may not be immediately. You may have to wait a few minutes, but we will do everything we can to get you back into your home. Um, and that communication of the flaggers is kind of your way to um, request access through the work zone as the paving is going on. Um, obviously, there'll be impacts to delivery of mail and the trash. And I think um, our contractor has been in communication with the Postal Service and then utility, uh, I'm sorry, uh, parcel service deliverers. And then obviously, we're talking with Recology about um, scheduling around the, the impacts of the, the um, street closures. So we'll we'll be in communication with your service providers. Another impact is going to be dust and gravel. And if I didn't mention it, the grinding operation is probably the most noisy operation we're going to conduct. Um, if you can imagine, it's a, a rotating toothed blade that, that is grinding up the street in your neighborhood. So there is dust generated by that. There is gravel generated by that and certainly a lot of noise. Um, the mitigation is we will be sweeping the streets at the end of every shift. So there won't be an accumulation of loose material on the roads. Um, and we'll we'll have we'll have water trucks and sweeping equipment on site every day to clean up at the end of each shift. Next slide, please. Uh, the last item, I think, with regards to tra traffic and construction impacts are obviously we're going to have trucks in and out of the sites, um, bringing asphalt in for paving, removing the asphalt grindings during the grinding operations, and some minor truck traffic removing the concrete for the curb, gra uh, the curb ramps and gutters. The, the haul routes are here in purple truck routes, I should say, they're primarily the same routes that were used during um, the debris removal in the cleanup phase of the disaster recovery. Um, the, 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 the one thing I did want to share with you is all of the materials that are generated, um, whether it's concrete debris or the asphalt debris, is all being recycled um, and will be reused again. Next slide, please. And I think finally, in conclusion, what I'd like to, to tell you all is if you have an issue, if you have a question, if you need to get into your home, if you see one of our inspectors in a Coastland DCCM vest, please feel free to stop them and let them know what your needs are. We'll do everything we can to accommodate you. If you just want to have information about what's coming up in the regards to construction activities, Again, our, our inspectors are out there. Um, they have information they can share with you, and they're more than happy uh, to answer your questions. So anytime you have a question and you see one of our inspectors, please feel free to stop and talk to them. Next slide. All right, Greg, I'm going to turn it back over to you. Thank you, Matt. A quick reminder regarding schedule. Uh, there are many factors that can impact the project schedule, including inclement weather and unanticipated conditions or circumstances that may be encountered during the work. The timeline we heard is currently our best estimate, and we will continue to provide schedule updates through, through the project website and weekly emails. We will put us up a screen shortly with how you can access those resources. Now we'd like to address your questions about the project. Slide, please. Uh, before we begin, joining Felicia, Matt, and myself to answer your questions and hear your comments, we have Mike Van Mitty, Associate Traffic Engineer, and Neil Bregman, Emergency Services Manager. I will now ask Stephen to review how the public can participate by asking live questions and comments. Perfect. Thank you, Greg. So once we get underway with the question period, Anyone wishing to ask a question or make a comment can raise your hand in Zoom. For individuals participating in the meeting by telephone, you can dial star nine to raise your hand. You can also type your question in the chat function on the Zoom screen. Uh, I will then call on the public one by one who have their Zoom hand raised and will unmute your microphone so you can ask your question. Once you've raised your hand and asked your question or shared your input, <clears throat> excuse me, your hand will be lowered, 
and your microphone will be muted again. So our panelists can respond to your question. Okay, thank you, Stephen. Are we ready for the first meeting attendee to ask their question or provide a comment? Uh, yes, we are, Greg, and I'm looking for anyone that has their hand raised. Mm -hmm. Okay, our, our first guest to this meeting is Lisa. Uh, Lisa, your microphone has now been unmuted. You can state your name for the record if you, if you choose to do so, and you can go ahead and ask your question. Um, <laughs> my name is Lisa, and um, I have a, a question and a, well, maybe two questions and a comment. Um, how many participants are on this um, call? Hi, Lisa. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, it looks like there are 41 participants. Okay, thank you. And then um, you did say that you'll be posting the schedule. Um, and, and I guess I live in Coffee Park, so I'm, I'm wondering, I, I missed that when you're going to start more work here or, or what the duration um, at this point time is anticipated to be? Um, so we do anticipate to start paving uh, next week and it will continue until about September this year. Okay. Um, and this isn't, <laughs> this isn't a question and it's sort of a strange comment for <laughs> probably for many people to hear, but um, I have a standing home and I, um, I have had almost $100,000 worth of medical bills for PTSD and since the fires, and I'm still in treatment. And so I think this came out of another, I don't know, another meeting a long time ago, but um, I, I, know, I don't know how you can put this, but for the, for the workers to realize that for, for some of us to be going through this area and to have these um, reminders, um, it's going to be very, it could be very painful for some of us. So um, so if, if they can be aware of that sensitivity, um, that would be that would be really nice. Um, I, I don't know how you convey that other than, um, you know, just putting that forth that it's already I'm sitting here and I'm getting um, very nervous just with what I've heard tonight. So, um, yeah. Well, thank you for <clears throat> thank you for your comment, Lisa. And you know, we we will bring that up to our contractors to just to make sure that they are very considerate and thoughtful of the neighborhood that they are working in. Our, our sorry next... about that. So yeah. I'm sorry. Um, I, I just wanted to give an example. There was there was one time that um, it was um, there was some work that had to go on. It was quite late at night, and um, as I was driving home and you know on my street and had to pass these workers, we had put the request in for the work to be done. Um, you know, early in the morning. And by the time they got to it, it was like four o'clock in the afternoon. So then in the evening they were still working. And so as I was driving home, there were workers there who were, you know, it was dark out and they seemed to be just kind of oblivious to the fact that we'd been inconvenienced without power all day. And it was late at night and we were hearing the noise and the lights and all that. And so, you know, I'm sure the fellow didn't mean anything by it, but he was just sort of jovial and saying, well, how are you doing today? And it's like, no, 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 it's, this is a more solemn moment for me. You're on my street late at night. This is, you know, this is not fun. So at, at least, you know, I, I don't feel like joking. So it's that kind of sensitivity, I guess. And maybe it's not gonna bother a lot of people, but um, for the few that it might bother, um, just that kind of sensitivity. So thank you. Thank you for your comment, Lisa. All right. 
Our next guest to this meeting is uh, Virginia Pressler. Uh, Virginia, I'm going to unmute your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you wish to do so, and you should be able to speak. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, Virginia. We can hear you. Yes, thank you. Um, I'm just curious what the uh, the end decision was for Hopper. I had we had participated in a meeting as to Hopper with the, something in the middle and bike lanes and things like that. And I don't know if I ever saw what the end results were of those meetings. Hi, Virginia. Thank you for your question. Uh, Hopper is going to be under a separate project um, and it is currently in design. And you can follow along on the Envision Hopper website that uh, you, where you can get updates. Thank you. Um, one more question. I was, I was told that a street that we're on, we're on Dennis, that it would be an overlay. Is that also, if it's getting an overlay, is it going to be ground, grinding or is it just something put over? Um, no, I, that De Dennis Lane will be uh, a grind and overlay. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Virginia. Our next guest to this meeting is uh, Steve Rahman. Uh, Steve, I'm going to unmute your microphone and you'll be able to state your name for the record if you so choose. And you should be able to speak now. Hi, good evening. Um, I have three quick questions. One, is this deck page going to be available after the presentation? And then two, um, are speed bumps going to be added or removed within Coffee Park? I think San Miguel and probably Dennis is probably the main place. And then last was garbages. Are we going to be needing to bring garbages if we're in a court down to the main street or are they still going to look to pick those up in courts? Hi, Steve, thank you for your questions. Um, I believe the the first, could you repeat your first question? Is, yeah, uh, is, is, this deck, is this deck page going to be available after yes. the meeting? Yes, this deck page will be available after the meeting. The recording will be available uh, next week, I believe. Okay. And then in your questions about speed bumps, speed bumps will not be added or removed, but the ones that are existing will be replaced. So I do know the one, there are some on San Miguel that, that are deteriorating and we are installing uh, better speed bumps. And then the last one was just garbage cans. If there's any plan for whether neighbors are going to have to bring them down to the end of the court or if they're still going to try to come up courts, Coffee Park has so many courts in it. Um, Matt, could you elaborate? Yeah, on yeah I, I think if the tr if we can coordinate the trash pickup, it should be exact. It, it should be the, uh, the same nature that the pickup is now. If the truck is able to enter and, and maneuver run in your court, that that shouldn't be an issue. If we need to to close off the court before the trash pickup takes place, um, we'll have the contractor take the initiative, um, and and roll trash can or pick up or roll bins out to the the edge of the court if that's if that's what needs to take place. Yeah, and I'm just mostly thinking about the the more senior people for right. that. Yeah. All right, thank you very much. Yeah. All right, Steve, thank you very much. Our, uh, let's see. I'm looking, I I'm currently, oh, wait, one moment. Leave the hand just went up. Uh, our next guest uh, to the meeting is uh, Chris Shear. Chris, I'm going to un uh, unmute your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you so choose, and you should now be able to talk. Hi, so you mentioned Dennis is going to have the grind and overlay. I am assuming that on the website, it will list street by street what's going to happen. Is that correct? 
Yes, we have a we have a schedule that the contractor produces every week, um, and we can we can share that on the website. Absolutely. Okay. Or even if you know ahead of time what's planned for each street, and you could put it up there. I understand you won't know exactly what day, but to know what's going to happen on each street would be nice. Yes. Thank you. Well, thank you very much, Chris. And I currently see no other hands raised. Oh, wait. <laughs> Just as I say that, uh, our next guest uh, this meeting is Dave. Dave, I'm going to unmute your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you so choose. And uh, you should be able to make comment now, Dave. Okay. I think we're going to have to unmute your microphone. Um, all right, Dave, uh, while you while you work on getting your microphone unmuted, uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, move to our next person. We'll come back to you, Dave. Our next uh, person is uh, Becky. Uh, Becky, I'm going to unmute your microphone. You can state your name for the record if you so choose. And you should now be able to make a comment or ask your question. Hi, I'm Becky. Um, we're on Starview Drive, and I noticed we've had um, signs out that you're going to be starting on Monday. Um, it, does that mean paving Monday or just start other work before you start paving? And the reason I'm asking that is Mondays are trash day. <laughs> and so that's one of the things. And then is there anywhere that there could be parking out? Like, I know we can't go in and out of our driveways. Are we allowed to park on Hopper Avenue if we're going, going to be in and out and just walking into our neighborhood? Let me, um, first of all, yes, Starview is, is scheduled to for paving on Monday and Tuesday. Uh -huh. Um with regards to parking, we're not going to take up all if if you can park on an adjacent street and I'll just say Crestview as an example. Uh -huh. If you can park around the corner, that Crestview will not be closed at the same time as as Starview will. So there's oh. so okay. you may be able to you, you may be able to park in an adjacent street. Okay. Um and and um so, so you won't know har we looked at Hopper. It's not very safe. It's you've yeah. got a bike lane there, so parking in a Hopper is probably not a great idea. I wouldn't s suggest it at all. Okay. But like I said, we'll have some of the other streets in the neighborhood. We'll not. We will not be closing every street all at once. Gotcha. Okay, sounds good. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Becky. And uh, uh, our guest again is Dave. Dave, uh, if you. Would I mute? You should be able to ask your question. Hi. Um. I guess my first question is, I'm curious why this meeting was not held in person and it was only done on Zoom. Hi, Dave. Um. So we held this meeting on Zoom so that it would be accessible to most people and a larger part of the community. Okay. Other. Other community meetings are being done in person. Um, I just don't think this is the way to do it. The other questions I have are fairly technical in nature. On your last newsletter, it indicated that you would be closing um, entire streets and grinding and repaving the entire street uh, width and length, particularly like cul-de-sacs or by block in an entire day. Um, Looking at your specs, I don't see how that's possible with how your specs are written and what you're proposed to do. Uh, Matt, could you well, our, our contractor has developed a schedule, and the, as an example, their first phase of paving is not is not in a single day. It's in two, it's stretched out over two days. Um, they will be grinding one half of the street and overlaying that half of the street and then coming back and going through the second pass 
on the opposite in the other lane or other side of the street and paving in the second day. Okay. The shuttle vehicle, the shuttle buddy buggy, or however you want to put it, that the asphalt's being dumped into, is that a tracked vehicle or is that a wheeled vehicle? That's a tracked vehicle. Okay. Um, I and, that's and, all I... And, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Dan. Sorry. I was going to say, that's apparently that's all I got for now. I'll just have to see how you do it. Well, and, and Dave, just to clarify the, the, because of the spec and you're right that the the buggy is actually going to be an offset buggy so we'll actually be occupying both lanes or both sides of the street one at one time the the hopper and the buggy and the truck are all going to occupy one lane and the paving machine will be in the other side on the other side of the street okay um the other thing is i have a big pet peeve about is super dumps and them pulling the um the tag axle up while they're driving around fully loaded knowing full well they're overloaded and basically destroying roads so um that that should be watched and i believe it's in your specs that they're not even allowed in the area i i believe that you're right there's a moratorium on super dumps in the in the spec yes okay that's it. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Dave. And let's see. I'm looking for other hands. Uh, at this point, I see no other hands raised. All right. Uh, seeing no further questions, I'd like to express my appreciation and thanks to our panelists, interpreter, and host for being here tonight, and I would also like to thank all of you, members of the community, for participating tonight. We appreciate you taking the time to listen, ask questions, and provide your input. Slide, please. Uh, I want to remind everyone that the webpage for this project is neighborhoodroadrecovery.com, where you can find information on upcoming construction and progress and project background. On the website, you can also subscribe to receive construction updates. And you can send a request to subscribe or any other inquiry to info at neighborhoodroadrecovery.com. Our project information phone number is 707-385-1239. And I'd like to remind you about the city's special webpage dedicated to neighborhood travel routes during an emergency, srcity.org slash knowyourwaysout. We'll leave this screen up for a few minutes. Uh, tonight's presentation slides will be posted on the project website tomorrow, and a video of the meeting will be posted next week. One final reminder that there will be a community meeting prior to the start of the Fountain Grove neighborhood paving work to provide details about the fa that phase of the project. The second community meeting is expected to take place in late 2024. Information about the next community meeting and construction updates will be available on the project website neighborhoodroadrecovery.com. Thank you again and good night.